See, a lot of times we want God to work this thing out for us, for our own personal good. We want God to elevate us, but God don't want to work for us. God want to work through us to achieve his ultimate, his ultimate purpose. Oh, I got to tell somebody Jesus is the king of my life. Yeah. Oh, I got to show somebody Jesus will make it all right. It's going to be all right. The Bible said that this is a faithful saying, and it is worthy of all exhortation. That Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners, of whom I am the chief. And because of that conviction, I can hear the Apostle Paul, as he is talking to the church at Rome, he said unto them that I am a debtor. I am indebted to the Greeks and to the barbarians. I am indebted to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am now ready to preach the gospel to you that is at Rome also. Church, you need to understand that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the deutimus, it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. For therein or in the gospel is the righteousness or God's ability to make things right revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And because of that conviction... I can hear the Apostle Paul as he is talking to his young son in the gospel, the young man Timothy. He told him, he said, listen, son, I charge you. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance and at his kingdom. He said, listen, son, you need to preach this word. You need to be instant in season and out of season. You need to be able to reprove, rebuke, and exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. Timothy, the reason why I'm telling you this is because the time will come. When men will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn their ear from hearing the truth, and they shall turn them to hearing fables. But he said, but watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Timothy, you need to make full proof of your ministry, for I am now, uh, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge that give me at that day, and it's not to me only, but it's to all of them that love his appearance. Therefore, because of that conviction, I am now ready to stand flat-footed and firm and to proclaim unto you this unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ and to share with you my faith in Christ Jesus. We today are humble, blessed, for the last time that you and I was together. But since that time, we have gone our own separate ways. From the time that you and I was together and up into this present, somebody have gone on to meet their maker. But Preston Street, I see that God has been good to you. They allow, he allowed you to stay on this side of time life just for a little while longer. And we realize and recognize that God did not have to do it. But I don't know about you all, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he did. We today, we are humbled, blessed for this opportunity to be a part of this protractive gospel meeting. Amen. We thank uh, God for the brethren for their foresight to uh, come, up with the, come up with the idea to have this meeting to uh, make it a homecoming, a homecoming meeting to bring everybody back together, right. back together again. So we definitely, we definitely appreciate it. I know Brother Joseph said uh, earlier when he was up here that uh, if there's anything, if anything that could be done better, to, to let him know. Well, brother, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know uh, some things that could be done better. Uh, 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 you had uh, Brother Harper to get up here on Sunday to preach, and then you had Brother Carlton to come up here on uh, Monday to speak, and now you're gonna try to get me to come behind these brothers. Yeah. Yeah, surely, surely we can we we can do better. We can do better than that. Yeah, we can do better than that. <laughs> well, we thank the God for the opportunity to be able to share with you all in in this meeting. We pray to God that if something might be said on tonight to to make you think about your life and your soul salvation with Christ, and that you will make a change even tonight, uh, so that you will be in right in right standing uh, with God. We're thankful also again tonight uh, 
uh, for not only for, for myself, but I, I brought my Gucci and my, Luch uh, and, my, and my Louis with me right. on, right. on today. Uh, I, brought my, I brought my lovely wife, uh, uh, Penny, uh, as, well as, my, as well as my son. And so we, we're, we're thankful to God that they were able to come, come, come today and, and to share with, uh, to share with uh, not only just me, but with uh, you all, you all as well. Um, I don't plan on being long on tonight, but we know that that word long is a, rel uh, a relative term. Yes, true. You know, what might be long for you might not be long for me. And, 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 and what might be long for me might not be long for you. But uh, but we're gonna we gonna do our dead level best to to get you out of here in a in a decent in a decent time. I'm not gonna be like the preacher that uh, got up there and preached, and he, he he preached for a long time. And as uh, the members was getting ready to leave out the church at the close of the of the lesson, uh, the brother was standing there to the door, and a, a old man walked up to him and shook his hand. And he said, "Brother, you 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 remind me of a character in the Bible." And he said, "Yeah yeah yeah yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that." So the next Sunday, the brother got up and he preached again. He preached again for a long time. And sure enough, at the, at the conclusion of the service, the old man walked up to him again. So the brother said, said you, you, you preach, you, you remind me of a character in the Bible. Brother, yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, the following Sunday, uh, the brother got there and he preached again for a long time. And uh, after the member was leaving out, the old man came up to him. Before the old man got there, he, 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 the preacher nudged the brother that was standing beside him. He said, this brother keeps saying that I remind him some of the Bible. He said, watch when he come, watch when he come up here. Sure enough, he came up and he said, brother, said, you remind me of somebody in the Bible, a character in the Bible. And the brother said, yeah, 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 you keep saying that. You keep saying that every Sunday. He said, who, who it is that, 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 that I remind you of? I remind you of Peter, James, John, Paul? Who, who is it? He said, no, so you remind me of Pharaoh. He said, you need to start letting God's people go. So, so, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do our best to, to keep, this, keep this short on the night so we can, we can let y'all go. One of, the things that, uh, one of the things that Brother Pounds uh, taught us in ministerial training was that when we preach, that to get up, tell the people what you're going to tell them, tell it to them, and then, and, and then take your seat. And so we're going to, we plan on doing just that on tonight. If you, have your, if you have your Bibles, and we again, we are thankful again for those brothers that have preceded us thus far uh, in this, in this, 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 this meeting. Uh, thankful again for my, my son for those songs designed as well as, as well as the brother for that heartfelt, heartfelt prayer as well as the, the scripture, scripture reading. Uh, Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at the four read scripture on verse, uh, scripture on verse number 28. And again, we see some, some faces that we have not seen in a, in a while, and we do uh, uh, greet y'all with, 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 with God's speed, and hopefully we'll get a chance to fellowship you with y'all uh, when the conclusion, the conclusion of this lesson. Romans chapter 8, and we're going we're gonna to look at um, one, maybe two verses uh, on tonight. And Brother Harper, I was looking at your lesson on you did on Sunday, I see that you you only had one scripture. I said, okay, well, he's he, he going gonna, he gonna to be kind of short, but, you know, just because a brother only has one scripture, don't, don't equate that to being short. So, so, so we're going to look at, we're going to look at that. For the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28, uh, it was the Apostle Paul that said, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And then verse, uh, we, 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 real quick, we'll look at verse number 37. Well, the, uh, the Bible says, in nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. I want to live for a text in which to teach at this time. Preston Street, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. One thing about life is 
as Brother Powell used to teach us all the time, life be life in. Life be life in because at once one time in, in our life we might be on top of the mountain. And then in the next moment we are down in the valley. At one moment we have this world in the palm of our hands. And then the next moment this world have us under the ball of his feet. In one moment we are happy as a pink elephant. But in the next moment, we are, we are mad, we are upset. Life have a way of life in. One moment, we can be uh, full of joy and excitement. And then the next moment, we are full of sorrow and pain. But I thank be to God that, that, that we in Christ Jesus can be more than a conqueror through him that love us. That in the midst of all of our turmoil, in the midst of all of our, our, our trials and tribulation that we can go through, we can still have joy. Uh, Preston Street, that when we, look at, when we look at the fact that we are more than just a conqueror, uh, I take joy in telling you tonight that we are more than a conqueror. Because even in the midst of our troubles, even in the midst of our trials, even in the midst of our trauma, we can still have joy. And because we have this joy, we don't have to wait till the battle is over to shout. We can shout right now because we know that we have the victory. We know that this battle is won in Christ Jesus. So when we look at Romans chapter 8, the Apostle Paul is going to help us to help us to see just how uh, 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 much we have, how much victory we have in Christ Jesus. So we can see just how much of a conqueror we are in, in Christ Jesus. For the Bible, uh, Paul helped us to see in Romans chapter 1, I mean Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1, Paul said, uh, 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 Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation. Uh, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said, for the law of the spirit of, of uh, this law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin, of sin and death. Because we are in Christ Jesus, there is no more condemnation. And uh, to really make that make sense to y'all. For you can really grasp the concept that there is no more, uh, there is now, now no more condem a condemnation in us. We have to look at chapter 7. Because when we look at chapter 7, Paul helped us to understand that under that mosaic law, that there was a war that was raging uh, uh, in him. For Paul said that when I would do good, evil was always present. Amen. And when, when I... When, when I try to do good, uh, 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 the things that I should do, I find myself not doing. And that what I shouldn't do, that what I find myself doing. And Paul said, oh, a wretched man and I, who can, who can deliver me from the bondage of sin? But then he said, thanks be to God who have delivered us through Christ Jesus, because there is now therefore no condemnation to them that is in Christ Jesus. And then not only that, but Paul helped us to understand that because we are in Christ Jesus, we have the spirit of Christ that dwells in us. We have the Holy Spirit that dwells in us that now leads and guides and rules us uh, through this world, through, through his word. We have God's, we have God's spirit, and, and the Holy Spirit is to guide us. It's the guide us, it's the leader that we no more have to worry about the spirit of life and death, but now we have, I mean, the spirit of, 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 of flesh and this sin, but we now have the spirit of, of life that dwells in us. And so Paul now makes that transition to help us understand the benefits of the Holy Spirit that we have now dwelling in our members. And, and, and one of the benefits that we have in our members in, 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 with, with the Holy Spirit is we have now the ability to now that we can pray to God. We can pray to God whatever problem that we have, we can take it. 
to God in prayer. That's one of the benefits of being a member of the body of Christ. That's one of the benefits of being a, 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 being, being a, a, a Christian in Christ Jesus because we now, we can go before the throne of God for ourselves. I believe it was Apostle Paul said that we ought to be anxious for nothing. In, 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 in Philippians chapter 4, he said we ought to be anxious for nothing. But he said, but all things through prayer and supplication, coupled with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And he said, when we do it like that, when we do it with thanksgiving, remember where God had brought us from in the past. Remember where God had delivered us from. And we remember that we can be thankful knowing that if God did it then, he can also do it now. And so uh, uh, Paul said that uh, when, we go to Jesus, when we go to God and we go there with thanksgiving, uh, and we take our problems, our burdens to, 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 to God and leave them there. Then Paul said that once we do it like that, Paul said, and the peace of God. That surpasses all understanding. We stand as a guard around our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. So one of the benefits that the Holy Spirit gives us is that we can now uh, pray to God. And then not only that, but the Holy Spirit also, as Paul said in verse number 26, and I'm trying to get to verse 28, but Paul said that, uh, he said that the Spirit also helps our infirmities. The Spirit also helps our weakness. He said, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit make intercession for us with groaning that we cannot would not can be, uh, cannot be uttered. In other words, that uh, when we are going through difficult times, when we are going through problems and situations, have you ever had a problem that it was so, it, 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 you had so much pressure on you that, 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 that the night just keep on getting darker and that, that the words just wouldn't come to your, just come to your mouth. And the only thing you can say was, Lord, have mercy on me. Uh, is that that moment where the Spirit steps in. Lord, have mercy. It's where the Spirit steps in and help us in this affirmity. That, that when we don't have the word to say, that when we, when we get tired of sick and tired of being sick and tired, when we, when we just at that brink of giving up, we got a Spirit that dwells in us that says, hold on, brother. Hold on, I got your back. I got, and the Spirit steps in and makes intercession for us that cannot be uh, 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 grown. So the Spirit steps in and the Spirit prays to God for us. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that we have a Spirit that when we can't even formulate the words to say, the Spirit, God's Spirit has our back. And the Spirit of God comes in and he, he prays for us. But not only does he pray for us, but there's an attitude that when we pray, there's an attitude that we ought to have when we get up off our knees. For Paul says in verse number 28, now watch this now. Paul says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that, is, to them that uh, love God. You have to understand, Preston Street, that uh, the subject matter in this text here is God. So what the text is really saying is God works all things for good. God works all things for good. In other words, God, whatever our thing may be, Whatever our thing may be, and I heard Brother Carton on last night saying some things are financial things. Some things might be uh, 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 marital things. Some things might be a uh, 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 death thing where somebody in your family, a close friend, had died. Whatever that thing is, God can take that thing, make it work with this thing, and this thing make it work with that thing. And he would do it for his own purpose. And his own glory. Church, 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 church. Uh, you have to understand that when Paul says, and we know that all things work together. That word work together in the Greek comes from a Greek word, synageo. Synageo uh, is where we get our 
English word from synergy. Synergy is where you take two things and make it work in harmony. God will take whatever our thing is and make it work for his glory and for his honor. Oh, I wish I had time for this. Uh, 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 God can, not only can God work in supernatural law, but God also can work in providence law. God have a providence. Uh, what God providence is, is when he works within the realm of natural law. Supernatural law is when God works outside of natural law. Brother Carl just talked talk, talk about this on last night a little bit. But uh, when Jesus walked on that water last night, yeah. that was supernatural law because he worked outside of the realm of natural law. There is a natural law that says what goes up must come down. That is a natural law. So when Jesus picked one foot up, and as long as he had that one foot up over the water, that wasn't a miracle. But when he picked that other foot up and started walking and continued to walk on water, he defied the laws of nature. So that became, that became a supernatural law. It was unnatural for a person to be able to walk, to walk on water. So, but not only can God work in uh, supernatural law, but he also can work in providence law, which means he can work within the law of nature. Can I show you this in, in, in high depth? You remember a man named Abraham. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac, uh, Abraham, God told Abraham to offer his son, his only son, Isaac. Uh, Abraham Went to the place. Now, here's what I like about it. We can, we, we, can, we, can, we can learn something from Abraham. Because the Bible said that uh, Abraham prepared the night before to go to worship. Oh, y'all missed that. Oh, y'all missed that. Yeah, yeah. He just didn't wake up Sunday morning and start planning to worship. He planned the night before. And not only did he plan the night before, but the Bible said that he got up early. Amen, Walls. Amen. <laughs> he got up early in the morning, and he took his offering with him. <sighs> Abraham didn't wait till the offering plate came around, and then say, "Well, I got these thirty dollars, and 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 you know, I I, I got to eat, and I you know, I got to have gas." Abraham was prepared beforehand of what he was going to sacrifice to God. And so uh, when he came to the place, he had those two servants with him. Uh, Abraham said to the servants, y'all stay here. Me and the lad going yonder to worship, and we'll be back. Sometimes. We have family members that might show up on our house on Sunday that claim they don't have no church clothes to wear. Y'all stay here. Me and the lad is going over to worship, and we'll be back. But I know, I know, I know, I know some of us. That, that, that's a whole nother, whole nother lesson. That's a whole nother lesson. I know some of us when my family member here, and they didn't have, so I'm, I'm but that, that's, I, I, I didn't come here. I didn't, I didn't come here to be messy. I didn't come here to be messy. But, 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 but. Uh, Abraham went up on the mount that God had provided for him. And uh, Abraham's son said, Father, I see the fire and I see the, I see the wood, but where is the sacrifice? And uh, Abraham told Isaac, he said, son, God will provide for himself, a lamb. And so uh, Abraham drew out the knife, and he was going to sacrifice his son on that altar that, that day. This house, he was going to watch this natural, how God worked through natural law. 
just as he was about to slay his son Isaac, a ram came through the bush and got caught. And God said, steady your hand, for there's a ram in the bush. So Isaac being on the, uh, uh, being on the altar was one thing. This ram walking through the thicket that didn't know that day he was going to be sacrificed was another thing. So what God did, God took this thing, made it work with that thing, that thing made it work with this thing so Isaac can go home. That's how God worked through his providence. Uh, and so, and so uh, 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 what Paul said, Paul said that all things work together. Uh, God can make all things work together. Watch this now. I'm almost done. Paul said that uh, God can make all things work together. Watch it now. He didn't say for your personal good. See, a lot of times we want God to work this thing out for us, for our own personal good. We want God to elevate us, but God don't want to work for us. God want to work through us to achieve his ultimate, his ultimate purpose. God want to work through us because he's trying to reach somebody else. Y'all remember, y'all remember, y'all remember, y'all Bible scholars. Y'all remember uh, a man named Joseph. Joseph, uh, his brothers took him and threw him in the pit. From the pit, uh, he got to, he went to Potiphar house. From Potiphar house, his wife came up and tried to do a little something, something, and he got put in prison. From prison, he told Pilate, uh, he told, uh, uh, Pilate about a dream that he had about the, fam the, the, the family that was going to come in the land. And so because he interpreted the dream, he was elevated from prison into the palace as second in command. And so uh, when his brothers came, his brothers, uh, and so Brother Harper, if you get this, uh, 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 look, at, look, at, look, at, look at Genesis chapter 50, round about verse number 20. I think that's what it is. But uh, when his brothers came, uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph told them, y'all meant this thing for evil. But God meant this thing for good. When you have a brother, go ahead and read. Genesis chapter 50, uh, looking at verse number 20. Uh-huh. You thought evil against me. But God meant this thing for good. Why did God meant this thing for good? Watch this now. Go ahead, Brother Harper. You'll bring the past. Uh-huh. To save, that was the purpose of God. That was God's purpose to save much people. Because you got to remember now that uh, God didn't do this for Joseph. He didn't elevate uh, this, he didn't elevate Joseph to power for Joseph. Joseph had a brother named Judas. I read somewhere where the Bible said that the scepter should not depart from Judah. Neither should the law between his feet until Shiloh comes. So God didn't elevate Joseph just to be elevating Joseph for his purpose, for his good. God elevated Joseph because it was through, uh, it was through Judah that the Messiah was coming. The, the seed promise was in Judah. So God had to elevate Joseph, put him in a uh, right hand of command, because when the famine come, God did not want to destroy off the Hebrew race. And so God prepared, he prepared uh, 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 Joseph to be able to bring a line, to find a line for Judah to come through. God always did that, for somebody else. It was another purpose that God had in mind. Uh, the reason why uh, uh, he made all things work for good. He, he took uh, Joseph uh, to the pit. From the pit to Potiphar. From the Potiphar uh, to prison. And from prison into the palace. And he done all of that. He made all of that work together. 
so that the Messiah will be able to have that line to come through. And so, and so we have to understand that God don't want to work. Uh, he don't want to work for you, but God want to work through you to achieve his ultimate, his ultimate goal. And so the Bible said that all things work together for good, for them that love God, to them that is called according to his purpose. God has made a purpose for us all. And the purpose that God has for us all, for us to be conformed to the image of his beloved son. So, so, so Preston Street, when we go through these problems, when we go through these situations, whatever we're going through, God know how to take our situation, make it work for his glory and his honor to achieve his purpose. And so, and, 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 and so when we look at this, God wants to use us for his own glory. And you know, and you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes, I can testify to this, sometimes we don't move unless we got some pain. We don't move unless we, we, got, to, we, we, we got to go through something. Y'all remember, y'all remember, y'all remember uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the multitudes. Uh, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. It was their job to take the gospel into all the world. They got stuck right there in Jerusalem. They got, they got comfortable right there in the mega church right there in Jerusalem. It wasn't until persecution came that the gospel went everywhere. They went everywhere preaching the word just like as God wanted them to do. And so sometimes we have to go through a little something, something for God to get his ultimate goal. His ultimate purpose, his ultimate glory, and where we he will have us, he will have us to do. And so, and so if you here today, you here today, God wants to use you for his own glory. He wants to use you for his own purpose, whereby that he can not only work for you, but God wants to work through you to achieve his ultimate, his ultimate goal. And sometimes we have to change the way we see things. We have to change the way we see things. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was doing a doing a study, but I, doing a study not too long ago. Well, a brother said that we have sometimes we have to change up our belief. We have to change up. I'm not talking about our fundamental belief. I'm not talking about uh, believing in the one Lord. I'm not talking about that. But there is a fundamental belief that is hindering us to making uh, the ultimate change that we need to change. Because the brother said that our beliefs uh, affects our emotions. Our emotions affect our, our thoughts. Our thoughts affect our actions. Our actions affect our results. And our results reaffirm our beliefs. So sometimes we got to change our belief. Let me put this in. Let me put this in high def again. Uh, sisters, if you have a belief that all men are dogs, If you have that belief that all men are dogs, uh, your belief is going to affect your emotions. So when you get in a relationship, uh, uh, psychologists say that those first five years, of, I mean, the first five, the first five months of that, of that relationship is called what the limerence, the limerence stage. It's when the dopamines and all of that is, 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 is taking place in the mind. And so you are, you know, you all cuddly and, and, and cutie and uh, you hang up, no, on three, you hang up and, you know, uh, you opening doors and, it, you know, we, we, you know, we're doing all of this cute stuff. But after the, after the, about the first five months, things start to wear off and your, 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 your belief system start to kick in. And so uh, if the brother, if the brother get a text from his mama and he took his phone and he started texting her back. If you got the belief that all men are dogs, your belief is going to affect your emotions. So now you're going to get uh, you're going to get a little bit irritated. You're going to start getting a little bit angry. You're going to start getting a little bit. You're going to have some fear factor come in there. So uh, not only is your belief going to affect your emotions, but your emotions going to affect uh, your thoughts. So now you're going to start thinking stuff. You're going to oh he. He texting somebody. Uh, and so now your, uh, your, your thoughts is going to affect your actions because now you're going you're gonna to speak out. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. 
So now you're going to speak out. Uh, when you speak out, uh, the brother going to feel like, well, if you're going to accuse me, I might as well do a little something, son. You know? And so now your actions uh, affect your results. I knew that. I, I, I knew it. I knew it. And so now your results is going to reaffirm your beliefs. And then the wheel goes around and around and around. But if you change your beliefs, and we have some belief that we need to change, even in the Lord's church, we have some belief that we need to change. You know, uh, uh, some of the belief that we need to change, that even on a rainy day, I need to be there. Our belief is going to affect our emotions. Our emotions is going to affect our thoughts. I, I need to get there. I need, this, I, I need to think about I need to think about what I'm missing out on. Our, our thoughts is going to affect our actions because we're going to get in the car come, come, come rain or hell or high water. I, I need to get there. Uh, uh, our thoughts is going to our thoughts is going to affect our results because I get there. I'm hearing a lesson. I, I, I knew I should have heard that. I, I knew I should have been here. Not only I should have been here, somebody else should have been here to hear the same thing. And so now your, uh, your, your, your result is going to reaffirm your belief. Only thing we got to do is just change up, change up our belief. And the only way we're going to change up our belief by staying in the word of God. Because I did remember the Bible saying that faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so if you're here today, you're here today, God have a purpose for your life. And, 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 and only thing you got to do is just change up your belief. This world system that's out there today is not for you. This world is only here to steal, kill, and destroy. I know everything looks good out there. I know, I know there's a party, a lot of daddy. We like to party and, you know, you, you know our, our, our church seem boring. And, but you got to understand, I believe Jesus said that straight is, a, is the way that lead us to life. Broad is the way that lead us to destruction. And many thereof will go therein. There is a way that seems right unto the man, but the end result is the way of death. Fame might seem good right now by going down that broad path, but the more you go down that broad path, you're eventually going to understand that that broad path is going to get narrow and narrow because there's a way that goes to destruction. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to righteousness. And there is few thereof that find it. God wants us to enter into that straight gate, because there is life in that straight gate. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. So if you want to have life today, not that temporary fulfillment that, that the world seems to give, but if you want to have that life, life is in Christ Jesus. You have to give your life to Christ even today because we don't know when this life here is going to end. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, 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 the Bible lets us know that, that when Jesus said when he come, he's going to come as a thief in the night. And the Bible said that if the good man of the house knew what hour the thief was come, he would have watched. And he would have he prepared himself. And so Jesus is not a thief, but he's going to come like a thief. And we don't know that uh, it, it, it might not even, uh, Christ might not even come, but uh, 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 we still might end up dying. Uh, because I think the Bible still, it was, was, was it James that said, uh, James that said that life is just a vapor that appears for a little while, and then it's going to vanish. It's going to vanish away. And so uh, we know that life is here. We, uh, we know that our life is going to appear. We know that life is like a vapor. We, we, we understand that. But what we don't understand is how long is that little while? That little while could be 10 years. That little while could be 15 years. That little while could be 25 years. That little while could be 50 years. It could be 60 years. But one thing is for sure is we're going to vanish. We're going to vanish away. And so it behooves us to be ready. 
it behooves us to be ready. And God wants us to be in his ultimate purpose. God's purpose for man today is to be one in Christ Jesus. And in order to be one in Christ Jesus, that means God wants us to be in one place, in one body, in the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. Well, you say, well, Brother Oliver, well, how do I get into that one, that one body? I already told you, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Not only that, but Jesus said, Jesus wants us to obey that calling, that gospel calling. Uh, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the, watch it now, that definite article, the gospel, which means whatever noun or pronoun comes after it, it's only one. Jesus said, I want you to go into the world and preach the gospel. Uh, the, and that gospel is so powerful that it's the same gospel that was preached 2,000 years ago that saved 3,000 on the day of Pentecost. It's the same gospel that will save us today. Same gospel. It's not another gospel. It's the same gospel. It's that one gospel. We say, well, Paul, what is that one gospel? Paul didn't leave that, that to herself. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, wherein you stand, by the which also you are saved, if you keep in memory, unless you have believed in vain. He said, for I declare unto you, first of all, how, how uh, 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 how, how Christ died for our sins watch this, according to the scriptures that he was buried and rose again from the dead the third day and he did it just like the scriptures said he was going to do it he did it according to the scriptures and so if you want to be uh, uh, if you're here today and you want to be saved you have to obey the gospel because faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God the gospel is that word of God. It's God's standard of righteousness that, was, that is used to say man. So not only do you got to hear the word, but you got to believe the same. Not only do you got to believe, but you got to repent of your sin. Jesus said, I tell you nay, except ye repent, you said all oh, likewise, likewise perish. And then you must be able to confess the greatest name that ever known to man. For you, the Bible said that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. It was his eunuch that said that I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. This confession brought death to Christ, but it will bring life to you when you complete your obedience in that watery grave of baptism. And then we must do like Jesus said. When Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized, that's the he that's going to be saved. He that believeth not, that's the he that's going to be damned. And so, if you want to be saved there, you have to obey the gospel. You have to do what Jesus said. Jesus said, why call me Lord and refuse to do what I have told you to do? So, if you want to be saved today, why don't you come? Why don't you come by, by, by obeying the gospel? And then, if you are here today and you are a member of the body of Christ and you found yourself being a guilty distance to God, why don't you come back home through a simple, uh, 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 a simple confession and prayer, and we will pray for you because the Bible still says that the affectionate, fervent prayer of the righteous does a lot of good or availeth much. And so if you stand in either category that you want to be saved or you want to rededicate your life to Christ, why don't you come as we together? One, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wondrous things, even purposes planned of old and fulfilled in faithfulness and truth. Yeah. 
love you, Lord, with all my soul. Love you, Lord, with all my mind. Love you, Lord, with all my soul. Love you, Lord, with all my soul. Love you, Lord, with all my mind.
said, I come to this well every day and my feet are getting mighty tired. Jesus said, don't you worry, give your water from the well that'll never run dry. She got to jumping, feeling mighty happy. She just couldn't hold a piece yet. She went to town telling the people all around she put the word out on the street. She said, come see the man with the master plan It's the Savior I have found Oh, blessed Jesus I tell you that I've seen him And he turned my life around And she cried Oh, I got to tell somebody oh, Jesus is the king of my Jesus life Jesus is the king of my life Oh, I got yeah. to show somebody Jesus will make it all right oh, it's gonna be all right Oh, I got to tell somebody Jesus Oh, 